In this episode, we're going to try to rebut an argument which says that nonviolence fails to do the good thing. I'm excited about this episode because it was actually thinking through this very rebuttal that caused me to commit to the position of nonviolence. This idea is easiest to see through analogy. So let's start where all good analogies, philosophical and moral, begin. Nazi Germany. You're a German citizen, and the Allies are advancing, and the concentration camp near your house starts to empty out of German soldiers. So you go up there to take a look and see what's going on. Now you've heard the rumors, and you've seen and smelled the smoke. You know what was going on there. So when you get up to the camp, and you see a German guard herding people into this building, and then going over to flip a switch, you know what's going on. Now you see another guard's gun lying on the ground. What do you do? Is it morally required that you kill the guard? Is it morally required that you don't kill the guard? Or is it morally up in the air and left up to your conscience? What's the right thing to do? Most people, including most Christians, are going to say that it's morally necessary to kill the guard, to save innocent life. And some are going to say, it's kind of up in the air. I can understand if your conscience in that moment prevents you from doing it. Hardly anyone is going to say, don't shoot the guard. That creates a conundrum for a lot of Christians, particularly conservative Christians and evangelicals. And that's because anti-abortion Christians recognize that abortion is a modern-day holocaust that has killed tens of millions of lives. Many of these Christians live within a stone's throw of an abortion clinic. So their moral logic, for consistency's sake, should require that they go kill abortion doctors, or at least think it morally good when other people do. That, for me, was the clincher. It made much more moral sense to me that I don't shoot the Nazi then it made sense that I go and I start murdering abortion doctors and nurses. There are a number of things that we can discuss which help us to see the moral reasoning behind this. First of all, it's clearly not immoral to allow evil because every evil that occurs is allowed by an omnipotent, omnibenevolent, omniscient being. If allowing evil is evil, then God is evil. The ends aren't the only determination of morality means are also a determinant. Prostitutes and embezzlers aren't justified in their immoral means, even if we can empathize with them in their unjust plight in trying to feed their family. For a more in-depth look at this, check out the full episode linked in the notes.